I have a Heathkit SB221 amplifier. This amp amplifier was made for vintage amateur radios. Uh, to use it with a modern amateur radio, you need to make some modification. Kits are available from Harbach Electric. Let's go to the first kit we have. What you'll need to put together these kits, decent soldering iron or soldering station, and workspace. Uh, this one I've completed. This first kit is the Soft Start, otherwise known as Inrush Protection. A couple sand block resistors, uh, a couple relays, a resistor in the middle. Simply solder these together and cut the, cut the leads off. This will be connected inside when it's completed. Uh, this particular part of the kit is uh, soft key. Uh, on the old SB two twenties and two twenty ones, the key line voltage was way too high for a modern rig. It would damage the rig if you attempted to hook it straight in the key jack on the back of your transceivers. So you need a reduced voltage on that, and this kit makes it possible. Simply solder these components on. You've got uh, three resistors here: transistor, voltage regulator, a couple caps. Um, some diodes. After you solder those onto the board, you'll have lead tails that you'll have to clip off. Uh, make sure you have good solders on there. And uh, then you'll solder these three wires on. Uh, this soft key uh, portion of the kit is ready for addition to the amplifier. These additional components go inside the amplifier. We'll get to that at a later point. I have your original Heath kit assembly manual or a copy of it. On hand you'll need this to complete the kit. This is the bottom side of the Heath Kit SB221. What to do is mount this right here. Alright, we've moved the the resistor, I just pulled it under these wires and I'll mount it over here later. Remember this is uh, after modification, it's not original, it's fan speed control. Soft start board. I'm going to mount it right in here. This new design has holes for standoffs. I guess they didn't used to be like that. So what I've done is I've collected four standoffs uh, for a computer motherboard, as you can see. I'm going to put those in those holes and s mount that right here. We cut these three zip ties and then we'll start soldering that in. So, but we need to get into this wiring harness, these zip ties. Pull the wire through and then use the desoldering pump to clean it up. So there's quite a bit of solder on there. The wire here was actually desoldered from the bottom of this breaker panel, from the bottom. And I, I desoldered it and I soldered it on to lead C here. And then out of lead A that comes out of the kit board now runs into the bottom. I soldered it on there. And the top, same thing with C, well with B and B and D, that comes off of the kit board, the soft start kit board, as you can see. And then and then the wire inside the heath kit that did hook here is here soldered onto the bottom and as you can see you solder these on get a good amount of solder on there so they're good and solid and there you go that's soldered on and then we've got a couple more to go before this one's done then okay the the, man, the instructions say refer to terminal strip bt we've lo located terminal strip bt right here you see terminal strip bt it has a capacitor on it, and it has a couple resistors, and it mentioned a diode. Well, the diode was kind of hard to see, but I ended up finding it. I had to, I had to move this resistor out of the way. I don't know if I, know if I can get in there. And I get this resistor out of the way, and the diode's underneath my screwdriver there. That diode needs completely removed. So you can unsolder it or cut it. I'm lazy. I'm just going to cut it out of there because it, it doesn't need to come back. 
Uh, the next thing that needs removed from the terminal strip is this red wire. Here on the terminal strip, we've got a bridge rectifier. Bridge rectifier. It's one terminal is more plus. Now, the model of this bridge rectifier does not match uh, in the instructions it says W04G, but that is not what's on the bridge rectifier. However, it's the only bridge rectifier that came with the kit, so it's got to be the correct. There's our bridge rectifier. Now, now the plus is at the top. I call that 12 o'clock. And there's four leads on that. So I call it 12 o'clock at the top, which is the positive terminal, and then 3, 6, and 9 o'clock. Uh, at the bottom, which is 6 o'clock, that's going to be negative. That's just how it is on bridge rectifiers. You have the plus at the top, opposite at the bottom, or 6 o'clock is the negative. Okay, the way this works, you're going to combine the positive, which is the top, okay, with this red wire that comes out of the of the keyboard or the it's red, it's the one labeled F is in Foxtrot. Combine that with the positive and, and those will solder on the terminal number one. And then the bottom, which is the negative on the bridge rectifier, well it'll combine with E the on the other side one. of the board. And yeah, and those will those will solder to the center, uh, the center post and that's the ground one so they'll go to the center and that leaves the three o'clock and nine o'clock terminals on the bridge rectifier and we'll get to those what i'm going to do is i make a little hook a little hook out of the wire there like here's e the black wire coming off that kit board and i made a little hook out of it a little hook on the leg and i'll put those together like that it just makes it a little easier to solder you can trim these uh, legs off this bridge rectifier at whatever length you want. It'll leave a little length on there though because they have to stretch across various posts on here and then one goes to this wire we cut. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll solder that, solder it on here and, and I'll come back when I'm ready to solder that. Well so I hook the wires in so they kind of stay in place. I, I, by the way the, the amps flipped up on the side uh, to, to make it easier to solder and uh, so what I'm going to do now, as you can see, hopefully my arm won't be in the way, but I've got those all hooked in there. Makes it a little easier to work with, and then I'll apply, apply my solder. And for this, let's see, I'll use, I guess I'll use the thicker solder. Put a little bit of solder on that. Once you get that soldered in, as you see the bridge rectifiers there, and they're all going into that center post. You know, there's a piece of tape right here, and I just have that piece of tape I just have that piece of tape there to hold the wire back while I'm soldering and then this piece of tape here will I'll peel it off. So anyway that's soldered on. Now I gotta solder that onto the board better. You can see it's not quite on the board. And again that's the bottom, the six o'clock position. The six o'clock position because that's that's our negative. So let's move our soldering iron here. Tap a little more solder in there. Gotta get it to hold. Solder's good. There she is. We got three different things soldered in that spot. The six o'clock negative leg of this bridge rectifier. Uh, you got wire here that goes up to E on the kit board, and then the ground wire that was already attached. And that part's done. So there you go, a little bit of soldering. Next, what we have to do, take that off of there. I was just using that for weight, checking to see if everything's in focus. All right, so this piece of tape comes off. And then of course, uh, like we mentioned before, this is the positive terminal and bridge rectifier. And we'll get this out of the way. Now I've already attached, I've already attached the wire there uh, just to make it a little bit easier. And those will solder on there. So I'll prepare that and then solder it on. We'll come back. That's what this is, the power supply. What we're doing, the bridge rectifier, uh, has taken the AC from this lead here and here which goes to the transformer the second the second lug on on this terminal post it goes to the transformer and this loose one we cut off earlier those are those are both sides of the AC and they will go on the sides of this bridge rectifier the nine o'clock and the three o'clock the instructions say to take the nine o'clock the nine o'clock one and put it on the second uh, terminal post uh, the paternal post is shared with this red wire. The red wire goes off to the transformer. But it doesn't really matter which one you use. 
um, you can use either one. The other one then uh, will go to this wire that we removed earlier and see basically we're taking this AC current and providing DC voltage to the kit board that we just added. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add those. As you can see I've already soldered um, the other two as I mentioned before. They're done. So that's all four legs of this bridge rectifier and that's what we're accomplishing is converting AC to DC to power this relay board. And uh, we'll come back. Okay, I got the amp flipped back over upside down. Now we're interested in this area. Uh, locate, there's a nut and screw on the bottom chassis here. Can you see that? Zoom in on it. The shadow's in the way. We're looking for that. We're going to take that little nut off. And we're going to put this little terminal post on. I'm going to stick that on there. Once we tighten that down, we will solder these two leads onto that for grounding. Okay, here's where we're at now. I got that nylon post on there. Uh, when they when we put this board on there, the board has one hole for the nylon post, which is basically a nylon standoff. Now it's important, as you can see, the voltage regulator right there. Uh, the instructions specifically state that they want that on the opposite side of the fan cutout. So I'm going to back up here. I've got it like this. The hole there. Come in here. Be a little careful when you're around all these other wires so you don't melt any insulation. into that wire good. And that solder will, it'll melt down into that braiding when it works its way down there. Uh, you get a good solder, but you want to make sure that it's not just shiny on the surface that it, it works into that braiding. Sometimes you get, the heat dissipates uh, over all of that, so you take your time and get a good solder. And once you got that, uh, the next we're going to deal with this red wire. So bundled all that up real nice. Um, I'll probably go through and I'm going to turn those down because you know those are the original zip ties. I might go ahead and put a new zip tie on there too because they're getting old and brittle. But anything that can catch that chassis that slides over we want to make sure it's down and out of the way. Um, now I've got to review the diodes that go on this relay and see if we've got all those in. Inrush protection, soft key, and we're going to turn it on. You'll hear the relay. All right, ready? I heard that relay. Turn it off. Come back here and listen for the relay. You hear kind of a delay in that relay. There it was. So that part of the kit's working. The SB221 amplifier, like its SB220, was designed for a day and age of vintage ham radios, which used higher voltage key lines. These amplifiers are well suited for today's use with modern rigs after some modification. Kits available from Harbach Electric makes it possible to modify the old Heath kit uh, linear amplifiers to use with modern solid state rigs. This particular amplifier is full legal limit 2 kilowatt. 